So you just bought or made a new FDM 3D printer, but the prints are turning out terrible, or maybe you just got a new expensive roll of filament and it doesn't print like your last one. No matter what brand or type of printer you use, if you don't use the correct settings, your prints will suck, and it can often take countless failed prints and lots of guesswork to get the quality that you want, equaling lots of wasted filament and time. Incorrect print settings affect both the quality of the final part and the strength of it, and they can also affect stuff like support and rafts and how hard they are to peel off. In this video, I'm going to be showing you my method for finding the correct settings for each new roll of filament that I get. This method will hopefully attempt to take the guesswork out of finding new print settings and will hopefully also save you time and money. So let's get started. First go into your CAD program of choice and extrude out a rectangle. I'm using Fusion 360 but it doesn't really matter whatever you use because it's a very simple operation and as long as the program can export as an STL mesh or an OBJ then it doesn't really matter. My rectangle is going to be 20mm by 20mm and then you can just extrude it about as high as you want really because you're just going to change that later. I exported it as an STL file and Fusion 360 has a nice feature where you can export it directly into whatever print utility you use, so I can export it directly into Cura. If you're not familiar with Cura, it's a free slicer program made by Ultimaker that works on loads of different 3D printers and it works with my RepRap Cruiser i3. Once in Cura, orient it properly so that it's facing vertical and then go into Expert and open Expert Settings. This brings up a whole load of extra settings which you can use and some of them are already useful and some of them just mess up your prints completely. But what I'm going to click is spiralize outer contour. What this means is it's going to do the entire thing as one continuous layer, spiralling up. I also make sure that there's no solid top fill, only a solid bottom fill. I set it to 0% fill density and 30mm per second for the outer contour which is going to be the only thing printing. And that's a very slow speed for a 3D printer, but for a 3D printer like mine, that's pretty much what I want for a very detailed print. It's got no overhang so it needs no support and I'm going to be using a very small brim just so that it definitely sticks to the bed. I can check the toolpath with Cura's G-Code visualizer and as you can see it's a constant spiral going all the way around, there's no info and no top layer. So the way that I'm going to be finding the perfect settings for this filament is I'm going to be basically be printing this cube as I'm going up and then I'm going to vary the settings at different Z heights. So I'm maybe going to start with varying the flow rate since that's quite an important one and I'm then going to decrease it as I go up and find the perfect flow rate and you can usually tell the best setting because it has the best surface finish with the least amount of deformations and anomalies. So there are a couple of different ways to do this, so as you go up the print you want to be able to change the settings. The first and easiest way to do this is to actually go onto the 3D printer itself, and if you have a Prusa i3 or another 3D printer like this with an LCD screen or display, then you can actually edit the print settings as the print is printing, so I can maybe change the temperature or the flow rate multiplier as the print is printing. And again, I think you can also do that if you're printing from your computer. Another way to do this is to directly edit the G-code, and you can do that just by opening the G-code in Notepad or something like that, and then you can just directly edit the g-code if you know what you're doing if you don't I wouldn't really mess with it but the easiest way to do that and the most simple way to do it where you can just leave it and then you'll have your results afterwards is the way I'm going to show you on Cura this plugin came pre-installed with my version of Cura and there may be other ways to do this on other programs or in this program but this is the only way that I've found so far you can find this by going into the plugins bar at the top left and clicking plugins then clicking change its z height and then click the little down arrow to add it this plugin does pretty much what it says it's going to do and it's going to change one or more settings at whatever Z height you specify. And for the first round I'm going to be finding out the perfect flow rate. If you don't know what flow rate is, it's the amount that it multiplies the amount that is needed for the extruder filament. So if you have filament that's slightly thin, you maybe want to have the flow rate, mul flow rate multiplier on like 105% so that it's going to extrude 5 extra percent filament than it actually needs. Or if you have very thick filament and it's over extruding, then you can lower the extrusion multiplier and maybe do 98% and then it will extrude 2 less percent than you need. In my settings, I'm going to start off with 100% flow rate, and that's just going to be the normal flow rate that I'm going to start off with. I'm then going to go to change at Z height, set it to 0, and then set the flow rate, the new flow rate, at 0 millimeters to be 106%, and that's the actual flow rate that I'm going to start on. And then I'm going to work my way down every 5 millimeters, I'm going to lower the flow rate by 1%, and then in the end, it should come up with a nice tower showing me exactly where the best flow rate setting is. I go all the way from 106% down to 98%. I then save the toolpath onto my computer for future use and I also save one in the uh, average temperature for PLA around 110 degrees Celsius and then I also save it onto an SD card so I can print it off on my Prusa i3. Thank you. 
It took about 20 minutes to print, but it would be a lot quicker if I increased the print speed, and it also only took 2 grams of filament, so it's not exactly like it's very expensive, this test. So here you can see the results and I have the scale sort of up the side and you can see it started at 105 and ended on 95 and as you can see as the flow rate decreased there were a lot more holes in the model so up here it's a lot weaker and it's not connected as much and lower down it's much stronger and it's quite hard to tell in between 105 and 103 or 102 which was the best flow rate but I'd say just looking at it it was around 103 or 104. So I'd say a flow rate of 103.5 would work quite well with this filament. As you can see, this area here is the best. Now it's time to do the temperature test to find the perfect temperature for this filament. So this is what the temperature print looks like once it's printed. I'm actually quite surprised with the results. It seems to show that the ABS is better at a lower temperature, around 120 degrees up here, rather than 150 or whatnot up here. I'm going to take it off and see how good the layer adhesion is at that lower temperature. So this is the hottest part here, and this is the lowest part here. And as you can see, the actual the lower temperature of around 120 degrees was a lot smoother. Now it's time to sort of crush it and see the layer adhesion, see if it's good on each. So I can break it quite easily down here. It's actually quite easy to break at the higher temperatures, which is surprising because you think that it would be welded more strong. And it's maybe a little bit harder to break at the lower temperature, which is good. I think maybe because this print is so thin, it doesn't actually represent strength very well, since it's only one layer. So that is it. For this particular filament, I found that the perfect settings were around 103.5% flow rate and 125 degrees Celsius. And this is ABS filament. And I then found that I could do some really nice prints with it. So thanks for watching guys, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and it's been useful for you if you do 3D printing and hopefully it'll help take some of the guesswork out of finding filament settings. Comment down below on what you want me to 3D print next. Coming up in the next couple of weeks, I'm definitely going to 3D print a Rambo and Slingshot. I've already tested one, it didn't really work very well but I'm sure I can fix it and do it again. Then after that, I'm actually also trying to 3D model a Teohama Slingshot so I can get that 3D printed. So both of those videos will be coming up sometime soon. On top of that, i got a couple of welding projects coming up so stay tuned. And sorry again that there's such a large gap in between video uploads, it's just because I've got so much work going on at school at the moment and I don't have enough time to do these sort of videos. 